welcome to Come Home. I'm Jen Mallon. Today we have a wonderful program for you. God is going to bless you and minister to you, especially those of you that are intercessors, your watchmen, you are hungry to have your ear pressed against the bosom of God and hear what he is saying for this moment in history. You know, God is raising up an end time church, a new wineskin church. He is stirring things up, shifting, shaking, and awaking, awakening. And my guest today is a beautiful woman of God. She and her husband have been serving in the ministry for many, many years, and uh, they're on the front lines. They've got their boxing gloves on. They don't mess with the devil. They put him in his place. Her name is Pastor Trisha Roselli, and she oversees, co-founded, and ministers in King of Kings Worship Center in New Jersey. She is a deliverance minister and a pastor. She worked with Dr. Peter Wagner for many, many years and is now commissioned and ordained under Chuck Pierce. I first met her and became acquainted with her at a birthday party for a mutual friend. And I did not know at that time that I had been watching uh, her on YouTube and watching her church and all of these kingdom warriors and ministers that they bring in to feed the body both locally and throughout the world. She just got back from Wales on a prayer mission and she is going to share with us some powerful things about what God is doing on a global level and how we can get in position as his end time army. She's a delight and she's a powerhouse. So before we go to Pastor Tricia, let's go to Sean and she is going to be singing her new solo single he will provide. You'll love it. Has there ever been a day where the Lord has not come through when you needed him the most? When you needed him the most? Has there ever been a moment, a moment in time where he did not supply? Where he did not provide I sought the Lord And he heard my cry In my time of need He did not pass me by And although the fear came in He came right on time Every time I praise the Lord for He holds my future. I always have a home for He is my shelter. Oh, the God who owns everything, He is on my side. Under His faithful cover.
Amen. He will provide. And I love that Sean wrote that song. It is an original and she is a creative communicator. She was one of our worship pastors for several years. And what a beautiful uh, ministry that she has. Well, as I told you, today is going to be very special, very precious. I have an incredible woman of God. She and her husband have served the kingdom. Uh, they are up in New Jersey, right uh, near the city, and they have a church. It's not a normal church. I would call it a new wineskin church. It is an apostolic hub, King of Kings, and they bring in powerful voices to position us for this season. She has a deliverance ministry, a prayer ministry. God uses her in many different ways to bring freedom to the body of Christ and to teach and train the warriors for end times. She and I share an incredible love for our Hebraic roots, and you're going to be blessed by her story and her ministry today. Pastor Tricia, thank you for thank being here. Thank, <laughs> thank you for so having much. me. Thank you. Well, Welcome back to Thank United you. States. Thank you. I know you have been on uh, different missions and, and you recently, like in the last 48 hours here, just got back from Wales. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Well, Wales has been a dream of mine for many, many years, since 1984, actually. And I read the book by Reese Howells yeah. called Intercessor. The in, yeah, Intercessor. And um, so what we had the privilege of doing was going to his school out there and we were in the blue room. We were where, it, it, like if anyone read that book, that's yeah. where there was a lot of strategy yeah. and downloads that they had received to really avert uh, the Germans infiltrating uh, Wales in, in, in England. Um, so we had the privilege of praying for three days wow. from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And there was a group of us there and it flew by. It was as though it was 10 minutes of praying. And the Lord really gave us wonderful strategy um, to pray about different nations and different things that have been happening. And we didn't even realize that some of the things we were praying uh, came was in the news the following day. Wow. That things were averted. And, you know, I can't talk a lot about that right now, but it was phenomenal. And then we also had the privilege of going to Mariah Chapel and the different locations where Evan Roberts um, really had encounters with the Lord. And there's the one chapel that he went to with that starts with a B that I am not even going to try to <laughs> pronounce it. It's in Welsh, but that's where he, he there was a, Seth Joshua was a prophet there preaching, bend us Lord. And that's where um, Evan Roberts just cried out to the Lord, bend me, Lord, bend me, Lord, wow. bend me for the nations. And, and really they had an incredible encounter with the Lord to where over 100,000 people got touched by the awakening just in Wales, but then it spread throughout the world. And it, it just, you know, it just takes that hunger. And, and the thing that really got hold of me is I've studied revivals for a long time. It only took a handful of fired up people yeah. hungry for breakthrough, which is Lord knows what we need right now yeah. in our country, right? Well, after being there and then coming back here and you have always spoken truth, taught truth, and tried to position the body. You have a very mature group of believers, seasoned believers that attend your church. Mm -hmm. They're frontline. Right. But from being there to coming back here, what, did, what was burning in your heart that you know I've got to keep shouting this out in America? Yeah. The thing that's burning in my heart is awakening for America. And um, one of the things that the Lord spoke to our heart, my heart, maybe last July, first of all, he said two things. There was going to be revival and awakening in our families. Oh. Second of all, he said that there was going to be awakening, but it's going to take us to pray, right? Oh. And he was releasing, a, a, I don't know, a mantle, if you will, of intercession on the body of Christ again, where that's being picked up. Because, you know, for most, most, I, most of the time, many churches I've been in, Prayer is not the number one thing that people are doing. That's right. And, and the Lord said to me that he was releasing that desire for people to cry out and hunger. And, you know, in Gideon, the book of Judges, 
the Lord talks about the Gideon 300 army. And many years ago, the Lord said to me, I'm going to be raising up a Gideon 300 army. And he said, I was going to be a part of it. I thought that was going to be 20 years ago. <laughs> That's for now. Because it, it just, and no matter how I tried, it just wasn't, you know, taking root. And so now in the year of Hebraically, we're entering into, we are in the year of 5783. And one of the words, one of the studies for that year, or 5783, is the book of Judges with Gideon. Yes. And, um, and God is raising up a Gideon 300 army. And that's what he needs. He needs the remnant that have a hunger. It's not the majority. It's the people that have a hunger that are crying out for breakthrough and know their God and they will do great exploits for the Lord. And uh, so I'm excited about what the Lord has for us. Pastor Tricia, how do people receive that mantle to pray, get a hunger to pray? Because you would think that it would just be the norm. Yeah. You know, there's a program here on our station, CTN, called You and Me, and where people call in and it is one of the most popular programs. Mm. It's late at night and they pray with people, they take live calls, they, they um, come in agreement. And they're, like you said, in the body, there's so few people that are really praying right. and God doesn't do anything unless we pray. That's the truth. H how does someone develop that hunger? Well, first of all, it's, first of all, it's a yes in yeah. our spirit. We just say yes to the Lord and it's a dialogue with the Lord all day long. You know, we, we do train in intercession, but most of all, it's an intimate relationship with the Lord. Yeah. And um, right before COVID hit, the Lord had given me a word from 1 Kings 18. And he said that before, you know, Elijah, when he was, he was battling with the prophets of Baal, yeah. and he said, how long will you falter between two opinions? And before he called down the fire, it says, and I think it's like 1 Kings 18, 31 or 32, it says that, he said, let's repair the altar. Mm. And it's the altar of intimacy. And I had been sharing with the church, we need to repair our altar of intimacy to prepare us for what's ahead. And what does that look like to you, right? What does it look like to me? It's different for all of us, right? But it's the key thing is that our relationship, our love walk with the Lord, dialoguing with him all day. We need to, listen, it's the basics. Spend time with him, yeah. read the word. Many years ago, I, I had this encounter with the Lord where he said the famine of the word is over Praise and God. that God is raising up a hunger for people to meditate on the word. When I got saved, that's what I knew to meditate on the word and, and to pray. I didn't attend a church. I didn't know, even know where born agains went to church. <laughs> I never heard of it, but I knew to do that. And so God is bringing us back to that. And, and, and I'm not saying people haven't been reading the word, but many have not. Right. And so it's saying yes to the Lord. Lord, meet me where I'm at because that's what he did for me. I didn't know, I never read the Bible, never. He met me where I was at and developed to put a fire within me to meditate on the word. There's so much out there now. I got saved in 1979. There's so much out there now that got the, it, the Lord has made it easy for us to press into him, to read the Bible, read a chapter a day of the word, but ask him, show me, here I am, Lord. Yeah. I say yes to whatever you have for me and I want to pray. And then. Get involved in a church that teaches prayer. And then also your program, things online. There, there's, there's programs online where you can learn to get into, to not just have the milk, but to chew the meat, to really develop a, a stronger relationship with the Lord. But listen, God will, God will just meet you right where you're at and help develop that. It's not something that you have to struggle or strive in. It's a beautiful thing. It is. Yeah. And you know, you, you just said that so eloquently. It's just, it's simple. It's simple. It's intimacy. Mm -hmm. It's making time. It's meditating, mm -hmm. which means just thinking about it. If you're yeah. in love with the boy or you're in love with the girl, you think about them all, all the time. The time right? and you think about what they wrote in their card to you. And you think about the last time you guys met up right. and, you, and, right. and it's that way with the Lord. Right. It's just to be, that's meditating. Right. It's just thinking about him and right. his promises. Right. Can I just say this? When, when people would minister to me about the Lord, I used to work for the airlines and, and many of the people were born again there. And I really didn't care to hear about <laughs> anything they had to say. And I told them I was an atheist. Talk to the hand because I don't want to hear what you have to say. You know, I don't, I, I basically said a sinner's prayer to Satan. 
I invited Satan into my life and told God I hated him. So really stupid, but it's what I did because I was so angry, yeah, you hurt. know, uh, hurt over situations, my father dying, just, and I blamed God for everything, as many do. And um, people would talk to me about the Lord, and I thought, oh, my God, here they come again. <laughs> and I really didn't want to hear it. But I was watching them, right. and I saw the peace that they had on them that I did not have. And um, I didn't want anybody to know that I finally decided to cry out to Jesus, which I did. And I want to really encourage people, give him a shot. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's what someone said to me. It's free. What do you have to lose? Exactly. And I thought, mm. Well, misery, unhappiness, lack of peace, no joy, you know, <laughs> a lot of things I had to lose. But I decided one day to, to, to just say, okay, Lord, if you're real, I accept you into my heart. Let me see what you can do. And I gave him one year and I told him, if within a year you don't change my life, I go back to my old lifestyle. Like he was so threatened by me. <laughs> but, you know, he met me where I was at. Yeah. And little at a time, and I didn't attend the church because, again, I, as I said, I, I didn't know where born again went. I never heard of a born again Christian. <laughs> and, and people gave me little Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland booklets, started reading them, and I devoured the word. I instantly started seeing miracles. Oh. People were getting saved. As a matter of fact, one of the girls that's currently in our church was one of the ones that got saved. Um, we, I just saw miracles. I mean, it was simple, childlike faith, and that's all God's asking. It was, I didn't know from anything. People were falling out under the presence of the Lord. I thought they passed out. I had no grid for any of this stuff. But that was, to me, that's what I always tell people. It's so simple, so childlike to just accept him and to, and to change your heart around because especially what's going on today's day, right. no hope, the chaos that we're, we're dealing with, there's a hope in God. And he's a God, and the scripture that he gave me early on was, Luke 137, that with God, nothing shall be called impossible. That's right. And to this day, I stand on that word. You know, what's interesting about your story is sometimes uh, if you go to the wrong house mm -hmm. of worship, mm. then you spend years undoing yeah. man's interpretation of something. And God obviously set you apart and put you in this little bubble and said, you're in my classroom and I'm going to pour into that's you. That's right, yeah. And yeah. that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. He, he wanted you all to himself for the calling on your life. Yeah. So you and your husband, uh, how did you hear the call to go into full-time ministry? How did you start your church? I know you worked with Dr. Peter Wagner and his wife Doris for many years. Now you're with uh, prophet, apostle Chuck Pierce. Yeah. And so you run with giants. Right. So right. How, how, did, how did you hear the call to go into ministry? Well, I, I, I had always been in ministry, really. Once I got saved, um, after maybe about a year and a half after, or two years, I met a woman who was an ex-madam. And her name was, we called her Sister Celeste. And um, she was in prison for eight years for being a madam. And many of her clients were people in Washington, D.C., so, um, yeah, very interesting, but they, people introduced me to her and I mean, she was on the PTL club and lesser some roles yeah. and anyway, so she really mentored me and trained me. She was very tough and she had a street ministry in New York city on 44th and Broadway would stand on top of a car with a bullhorn and preach the gospel and would prophesy. We, I'm telling you, uh, the training we had was unbelievable. And my first message I ever preached was in, in Broadway state prison in New Jersey. <laughs> And I didn't know it. She said to me, I don't have the word of the Lord. You do. I said, I do. <laughs> like, I'm going to slap you. <laughs> anyway, so. A holy slap, yeah, right? Yeah, it was a holy <laughs> slap, but I did want to slap her. But anyway, so um, so the Lord really, I had no intentions of getting involved in a, like a formal ministry. I always, I always, I was an evangelist. So I always ministered the gospel in the streets. I always just loved doing it. And then the Lord thrusted me into that. And then I met my husband, Peter, in, in a church service. It was a church that I did not attend. And I was sharing a testimony about what God was doing. And I saw that many of these young people had no clue about what I was talking about, especially about deliverance in the church. Yeah. That is an end time ministry. But many churches still don't uh, shy away from it. They shy away from that. And uh, he came up to me and asked me if he can come with me. And I told him no. <laughs> I didn't know him. Yeah. So anyway, so, um, but I, I, I attended, I continued uh, going to that church and then um, we met there 
and a couple weeks later we start dating and six months later he asked me to marry him and then after that we knew that um, the Lord was we were in ministry we were elders we became elders in that church and then the Lord just was speaking to us that we needed to start our own work and um, it was through a series of different circumstances that happened but but we were in ministry there at that church for 17 years. Wow. And then the Lord sent us to Basking, well, actually Bernardsville, and then to Basking Ridge is where we, our church is now. It's the next town over. Um, and we've been there since 1999. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, God really uses that. There must be wonderful things that have happened in that city in, in back in history, because mm -hmm. you guys keep that well stirred up and mm -hmm. God just sends mm -hmm. beautiful kingdom voices yeah. there. Yeah. Okay, we only have a short amount of time, so I wanna talk about your book, okay. 21 Day Fast to Break the Cycle of Unbelief. So many believers struggle with unbelief, but they don't think it's unbelief, but it is. Mm -hmm. And this is a little unorthodox, so kind of give us the executive summary. People can get it on Amazon, they can get it on your website, right. it's, on the, it's on the screen, but share with us about how you've seen this work. Okay, well, when I actually never intended for it to become a book. What happened was I was going through one of the most difficult times of my Christian walk. And you know, you really are questioning God. And uh, the Lord said to me, I want you to wake up every morning at five and I want you to write what I'm telling you to write. And I always felt like I was a woman of faith. I always, early on, but I'll tell you, uh -uh, at this point, I was really rattled in my walk and, and I just really challenged the Lord and he was challenging me because I don't know what I believed any longer. Because you know, we go through circumstances, yeah. right? And he had me write this every day and I was sending it out as a prayer a devotional to our church, they put it in a book. Oh, wow. And well, isn't that lovely? It, yes. They did it for you. They did it for me. So in this, it's just each day, it's a, a prayer and a devotional and thoughts about how to really identify root systems because we get a hard heart. There's disappointments. You know, you may say, well, I'm going to church. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Yeah, but circumstances, devastation, disappointment, you know, your heart becomes hardened yeah. and, and that can ricochet the, the seeds of faith That's from right. your heart. And so I went through that and I never would have thought I would have been at that place. Yeah. And that's how that book came about. Well, I know that it uh, can set the captive free and really help. But before we end, um, Pastor Tricia, I want you just to prophesy, pray, minister, however the Lord leads you. I know many are watching and something you've said today has really pricked their heart, they're at attention and they just, they want God. Amen, okay. amen. Well, I just want to encourage you that if you're going through a hard time, if you are hopeless and despair, or just really don't even believe in God, He's there for you. And even when you, you thought He never ever would would be there, that He would even love you. Maybe, maybe you've been through some really difficult times and you've rejected the Lord like I did. He's there for you. So in this time, I just want to encourage you that God is no respecter of persons. And like he met me where I was at and what he did for me, he will do for you. And it's been the best thing ever. I honestly don't believe that had not the Lord been in my life, I don't know that I would even be alive at this point because I had suicidal thoughts. I, I didn't really want to live because I didn't have hope. But the Bible says that he's a God of hope. And, and I'm so grateful that the Lord never gave up on me and that, that God is there to provide supernatural intervention, to bring miracles into your life. That's what he did. And it wasn't always so easy, but I knew that I had a hope in him. So I wanna encourage you today, ask him, he's yeah. simple. Just like I needed somebody who was to the point and very <laughs> simple. I, I didn't understand all these theological dissertations. Just, just get to the point, be simple with me. Get this, you know, and that's what he did. And, and that my family, my family, they rejected me at first when I became born again, but God turned this whole thing all upside down when I tell you. They thought I was in a cult, <laughs> they did. So, um, but they saw the change, the transformation that took place in my life. And, and you know, the Lord in this season, he is bringing families there's an awakening. Yes. The Lord spoke to me and said he's, he's bringing revival to families. Don't give up. For those of you 
that now maybe have been saved and you've been crying out for your sons, your daughters, for your husband, for your, your spouses, God is bringing them back. The Lord says that he, the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. God is bringing restoration. We have many testimonies of families that have been restored where there's been deliverance and healing and they're coming home. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you with that. In this season, God is, it's a season of recompense. It's a season of payback. It's a season of restitution. God is paying back to you everything that the enemy has stolen in this season. And I believe that. The other thing that the Lord had me do is look up the, the, in the concordance 5783, and that means to lay bare, to lay naked, and to expose. God is exposing everything that needs to be exposed, but he's also exposing revelation that you need, strategies that you need for this season. So, so he, you know, call out to him, Jeremiah 33, 3, and I'll end with this, says, call out unto me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know not of. So just, just, just know that he's on your side and, and Amen. just bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> that was awesome. Amen. Listen, that was an incredible prophetic word just for you to touch you and to encourage you. Please look up Pastor Tricia Roselli and her husband, Peter. Go on to King of Kings. There's so much meaty teaching there. Grab her book if you're struggling during a season of unbelief. Intimacy, prayer, rise up, wake up, and go slay those giants. We're so grateful that you joined us today. Thank you for watching. If this program has blessed you, would you consider praying for us, partnering with us, giving a love seed? We are here because of people like you. We're grateful. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And thank you for coming home. I'm Jen Mallon.